that the tajalli, that the divine manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so powerful on this day, there were be that we prayed it individually that we wouldn't be able to take it. And that is in the reality because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, when He says to our Prophet Moses, فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّ اللَّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ Allah ta'ala manifested Himself to the mountains on a deccan, that it became pulverized. And this is a reality that we come to understand the true nature of reality that we are here that we've been created to understand is that we are not just here abath, we're not just here in vain that we are here for a noble and an elevated purpose and in the decisions that each and every single one of us make and every single one of our moments of our day are going to determine that what is going to happen to us not only in this world but also what is going to happen to us ever eternally into the next world and this is one of the greatest aspects of the human being the abilities and the most powerful aspects of the human being, the ability that we have to make decisions. Is that when you're in a particular position, is that we're making decisions subconsciously all of the time, all throughout our days. But it is the way of a believer to be conscious and to be aware of the decisions that we're making. And oftentimes that if we're not aware of the ruse of our lower nature, the ruse of our soul and the ruse of the wasawis and the whisperings of shaitan, we might find ourselves making decisions that are not well thought through. We might find ourselves making decisions informed by other than what Allah Ta'ala has revealed to us in His book and has told us upon the tongue of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that the decision-making aspect of the human being is one of the most important aspects of, our, of the human being. Is that if we have the ability to master this, that we have the sense to do the very best that we can in ensuring that what is going to come to us in this world and let alone in the next world is going to be great from our Lord Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And from the wonders of Allah's creation that you find is that two people in the same household will respond to a particular situation in opposite ways. That for one person it will be a means for them to be completely cut off and rejected and for someone else will see that differently it will be a means for them to draw near to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The way that we perceive, the way that we interpret, every single one of us has a modus operandi, a way that we do things, a methodology, whether or not that it is according to the Sunnah of our Prophet وسلم, embedded in the understanding of the Quran or not, this is the big question that you and I have to ask ourselves. To what extent is each and every single decision that we make that help us in this quest and to fulfill the whole purpose that we've been sent here in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this creation that He's given us? And one of the most important concepts that relates to this is that we have to understand is that if there's decisions that we make that are in accordance with what Allah Ta'ala has revealed to His Prophet وسلم, is that we are setting ourselves up to attain what is called wilay. And this should be something that we know very well, theoretically at least. We should be very well in tune that there are awliya of Allah. There are people that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has selected. There's people that He has chosen. And wilaya is kasfi, it's not like prophecy, which is wahbi. Prophecy is something that is a divine gift, but wilaya is something kasfi. And in reality everything that is kasfi is wahbi, but that's another story. But it's kasfi in the sense that you and I, that the human beings earn it. It's something that we have to do outwardly, and as a result of that action that we do, that there's a response that we receive from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why that we see in the Qur'an, a wilaya amma and a wilaya khasa. A general sainthood and a specific sainthood. As for the general sainthood, as for the general wilaya, if we will, sainthood will translate that as when we talk about the wilaya khasa. But this protection that we receive from our Lord Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Allahu waliyu ladina amanu. That Allah is the wali. He is the patron, He is the protector amanu, of those who believe. That وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاهُمْ يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النور. What is the reality of Allah Ta'ala being our wali is that He takes them from the darknesses, the shadows, into the light. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And that as for those who disbelieve, أَوْلِيَاهُمْ التَّاهُوتِ That their awliya, their patrons, their projectors are these ta'hut, these false deities which we will get to the meanings of it, that has the opposite effect. يُخْرِجُنُهُمْ مِنَ النُّورِ إِلَى الْغُرِمَاتِ is that they take them from the light into all of these successive darknesses. So we see one group juxtaposed to the other group. Is that we have this first group that Allah Ta'ala is their wali. 
And the reality of this is that what? Is that Allah Ta'ala will take them from the darkness into the light. And this is something that is very important for us, not just metaphysically speaking, and all of the symbols and meanings that are underlying the various shades of understanding we have of darkness and light. But there's a reality to light. There's a reality right now, here as we sit. If we're tuning our hearts in to the reality of the day of Juma, that your heart is being enlightened, that light is touching your heart. Right now as we speak, if you tune in, there's a reality that you will leave today with stronger iman than you would than before you came, if your heart is tuned in. Every prayer that you pray, it's increasing light upon your heart. That every single time that you say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha illallah, Wa Akbar, any of the baqiyat, the salihat, you're increasing the light in your heart. And the light in your heart, the more light that you have, the stronger your iman is, because the reality of iman is light. There's a direct correlation between these two. And light for us is very important. But there's also darkness. And even though in a Manichaean sense we don't believe as dualists do in this, this ever struggle between darkness and light, Allah Ta'ala has called them out of Kuli Shay, but there's a reality to darkness and light and there is a competition in a sense. In that, as we walk out and based upon the decisions that we make in any given situation, is that we have these different tugs to these different directions. So you can be tugged in the direction of light or you can be tugged in the direction of darkness. And darkness for us is of many types. And this is why that it's mentioned in the plural. We have the darkness of the wasawas of the shayateen. These whisperings, the reality of the source of all evil that insinuates. And that he, when he places his trunk upon your heart and puts a thought in your heart that you think in that moment that you're making the right decision, that the reality is nothing but waswasa from shaitan. Is that the reality of the darkness of following your hawa. The darkness of following your caprice about these desires that come and then they go. And then if you follow it, that it takes you into something that it might potentially be displeasing to your Lord. There's different types of darkness. The darkness of kufr, the darkness of jahal, of ignorance. And all of these other types of darkness, that when you take Allah Ta'ala as your wali, that He will take you out of all of these darknesses and these shadows, and He will take you to the light, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But all of this is still the first level of wilayah. And there's other degrees that come after that. Because the opposite of which is what is the process taking place without the blessing of Iman. Because by having Iman in and of itself, is that Allah Ta'ala, we He will be your wali. That Iman is one of the greatest protecting factors that creates a fortress upon your heart. Just by saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And that we have in weak narrations that says where the reality of even the most, dis this most disobedient believer to be shown. And were there a light to be unveiled, that it would have filled up that which is between the heavens and the earth, from the strength and the intensity and radiance of the light of a believer, even the most disobedient believer. Why? Because of the power of La ilaha illallah. Where La ilaha illallah is placed on one side of the scales, and the seven heavens and the seven earths and the other side of the scale would be outweighed by La ilaha illallah. Is that La ilaha illallah is something profound, it is something deep. That it is something in and of itself that is at the very heart of who we are as believers. And that when you say that, is that there is a protection that comes over you that you receive from your Lord just from the blessing of saying that. And this is why, is that if you haven't experienced what it's like to not say la ilaha illallah. If you've always been in that fortress, oftentimes you don't know what the bitterness and darkness of disbelief is like. It's bitter. Well, Allah Ta'ala tells us about this. That these people, that woman you're reading, you and those that he wants to lead astray, that is as if he is harajan, is as if they can harajan, and then they sa'ad of the sama, the reality of their heart is that it is narrow and constricted, as if they are trying to ascend up into heaven. This narrowness and darkness that comes from rejection of the truth of La ilaha illallah, but when one says it, there's a protection involved in it. And then after this, Allah Ta'ala also tells us that not just about those who have a wilaya amma, a general protection from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's also a wilaya khasa, there's also a special protection that comes. And this is when our Lord says subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah in the awliya Allahi, la khawfun alim wa la hum yahzanun. Indeed, that the awliya of Allah, <coughs> that they shall not fear nor shall they grieve. They shall not fear, nor shall they grieve. Meaning that what? Getting back to the decision-making process. That the power of decisions is in that you are living in that particular moment. 
is that you are not excessively troubled by what comes in the past, nor are you excessively worried about what is coming in the future. You are living in that moment. And then to the degree that you let yourself be tangled in the past or preoccupied with the future is to the extent that you are not doing what you can do in that moment, which is the most important thing of all. This is why one of the righteous said, he said that were I to see someone commit a major wrong action, and they disappear behind that tree, and then were I to see them a second time, I would think that they were from the awliya, because they might have made a toba and a repentance in that moment, that were it to be spread out amongst the people of the earth, they would have sufficed them. The way that our Prophet Sallallahu referred to the lady who had the had punishment imposed upon her. And he said Sallallahu Alaihi were her toga, were her repentance to be able to be dispersed amongst the people of the earth, it would have sufficed them. What kind of toga is that? That is a toga of deep potency and of deep meaning. And that could happen at any single moment of someone's life. Is that they decide in that moment to make that decision, to make their life, to change their life, and to do something different. And to be able to take the path of wilayah. And one of the difficulties in this time when we talk about this wilayah khasa, which turns into sainthood, which turns into this special protection that they receive from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that we're lacking examples. We're lacking examples. Is that we need examples in order for you to, you need examples in order for you to be like that. And you also need environments. And in the secular world in which we live, it's very difficult for this to exist except in small pockets. This is the most important thing of all, if you take a seed, and how many beautiful analogies can we make between the world of farming and the earth that we've been given, which is like our mother, and between the creation of people. Imam Abu Hassan al he was asked, and he didn't author a book. He said, why didn't you ever author a book? And he said, my students are my book. They are who I've authored. In no, one, in no greater capacity we've seen this except in, in the capacity of the Prophet ﷺ with his companions. He authored them in that sense, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that he was the one to make them who they were. He was the one that trained them and nurtured them, then, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then from the power of what they had, they disseminated. And the potency of the secret of his transmission is reached us till this day. And this is why they say that if you see a wajh muflah, kayfala tuflah, if you see a face that has been felicitous, then how could you yourself not be felicitous? There's a secret in the nadar. There's a reason why there's a secret in the actual process of seeing. Don't just think it's about that seeing someone's physical body. There's a secret of transmission that is taking place. When you sat with people who have sat with people who have sat with people, why was it in the majlis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they used to come into his majlis, sometimes they wouldn't even know who the Prophet was. One, because of his humility, but two, that the light, the, the radiant light that was in his face was also in the faces of the companions. And as the Arab says, that your face is your sahif, it is your scrolls. Is that your face is indicative. Is that the, their traces, their signs are in their faces from their signs are in their faces from the traces of prostration. There's a reality to this transmission. And this is why the most important thing of all that we all need to be thinking about here as communities anywhere on the earth. This doesn't just relate to the United States of America, wherever Muslims are, where are the environments? that are going to be able to produce and to cultivate and to grow people that become awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That these are the most important people that we need to have on, on the face of this earth. Awliya, salihin, ulama, people that know this religion outwardly and inwardly. People that are preserving the inheritance of the Prophet outwardly and preserving the inheritance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa inwardly. Without these people, khalas, what is the meaning of existence? This is the most important thing of all. Is it to have these people in traditional societies where many of you are from? If you go back home to Morocco or anywhere across North Africa, if you go back home to the Arabian Peninsula, if you go back home to places like Turkey, all through the subcontinent, the different places where Muslims have lived historically, is that people know who the righteous are. That people know that who are the people that they need to go to and they want someone to pray for them. That this is something that was part and parcel of the tradition of what was being passed down to the next generation. They used to take their children to the righteous when they were born. They wanted the righteous to name their children. There's a deep blessing in this. This is instituted from the time of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi himself. But where are these environments that we're trying to create? That if you take a seed and you just throw it on the concrete, it's obviously not going to grow. But that you have to have the right soil. And you have to put the seed a certain distance underneath 
the surface of the earth. And then you need to cultivate it and not underwater it or overwater it. You need to take care of it. And sometimes it's, you need to place a stick in order for it to help it grow at first. And so forth and so on until it eventually bears fruit. And this type of investment is the most difficult type of investment. Because you're not going to see true fruits except for 7, 10, 15 years down the line. Is that this community that we're all living in. And many of these young people here now that are attending the Juma were not to be some of those that came before. These people wouldn't be here in this masjid right now, taking part with you. It would be like most other masjids where you go, where 90% of the people there are just 40, 50, 60 years old and over. What took place in this community to allow some of these young people here, that who knows what they would be doing, were not to be that they met these enlightened individuals that were a catalyst, was a catalyst for them to be able to dedicate themselves to the Lord. We need to be people who are in tune and know that there are a people that are righteous. There are people, there's how many hadith of our Prophet Sallallahu that talk about the righteous, that encourage us to connect to the righteous and have a relationship with the righteous. That these people are essential for us to be able to move from the wilaya amma to the wilaya khasa, about which our Lord says subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are those who don't have no fear, nor are they those who grieve. They are the people who have iman. They have faith and they are people of taqwa. They are people of piety. These are the awliya of Allah. And they're, were there not to be some way to know them, why does our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us to be with the sadiqeen? That wakunu ma'a sadiqeen. Be with the people of truth. If there wasn't some way of knowing that, then our Lord wouldn't command us to be with them. Is that we have to know who these people are. We have to seek them out. And that we have to be people who desire what they desire. And that they then recount what they recounted and tell others what they've told us. Because then Allah Ta'ala goes on to say that الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُوا كَانَ يَتَّقُونَ لَهُمُ الْبُشْرَى فِي الْحَيَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ They will have glad tidings in this world and before the next. In this world and in the next. What is this bushra that our Lord is telling us about subhanahu wa ta'ala? Read what the commentators in the Mufasunin say. Is that it's a number of things. One is that the greatest sign of all is that there's ta, there's obedience. One of the secrets of obedience is is that our Lord has given us a way for us to be able to overcome our caprice, the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu One of the underlying wisdoms of every single individual ruling of the sacred law, one of the great wisdoms is, is it's to protect you against the evil of your own caprice. About which that our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala says it can be taken as a Lord other than a God subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it also is one of the greatest ways for us to be led astray. Is that we have a sharia. We have a way that we can make ourselves adhere to the divine will of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the greatest aspects of this bushra. But there's many others as well. Everything that Allah promises in the Quran to the muttaqeen, this is from the bushra. From is, having the honor of faith. From being someone who has karama and who is honorable in the sight of Allah Ta'ala. Being someone who's been given victory. And there's all different meanings of being given victory. And the most important victory that we can be given is victory against our own self. Because how many times a day does our self conquer us? Is that we think that we're men and we think that we're strong and we think this, but we can't even overcome our own selves. Is that no man is truly a man unless he can conquer his own self. Until you and I continue struggling with our own selves. And the speaker has more problems with this than anyone else. Is that not one person in this room is willing to be called a rajul unless you can conquer your own self. Until you are someone that can stand up against your own passions and say no and hold back. You can refrain from it dragging you into the depths of something that is more befitting of animals or into something that is haram and will distance you from your Lord. That these are the meanings that Allah Ta'ala says. Bushra also has other meanings. That the sweetness of faith that Allah puts in their heart, that is a bushra in this world. That the glad tidings that they receive, as our Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophecy is ended, but what remains are these givers of glad tidings. What are these mubashirat, Ya Rasulullah? It is a ru'ya saliha. It is a good vision that someone has sees. Ya rahim lumman aw turala. That he sees or someone sees for them. When was the last time someone gave us a bushra? That of a good a dream that we've had. Dreams are real. They're very real. Visions are real. The scholars have dealt with this in the books. Look at the numerous commentaries from the greatest traditional scholars about these hadith and what they say about it. That these are real. When was the last time we saw a noble vision? 
When was the last time we saw our Prophet وسلم, or one of the Sahaba or one of the righteous or something that was at least that something to motivate us? When was the last time we saw what these things are? If we're not seeing these things regularly, it means we haven't entered into this category yet. And it means that we have to rectify the way that we view the world and then practically how we're implementing it if we're going to be able to taste the sweetness of these realities. That and he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, لهم البشرة في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة They will have this bushra in this world and the greatest aspect of that bushra is when they take their last breath. Is that they either see their place in paradise or they hear the glad tidings from an angel وفي الآخرة let alone in the next world. Because مَنْ أَحَبَّ لِقَاءَ اللَّهُ أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَهُ Whoever loves to meet Allah, that Allah loves to meet them. This, we're all going to take our last breath. What is going to be our state when we take that last breath? Is what is going to be hammered into our heart a deep longing desire to meet our Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or is it going to be like, no, I want to say. All of us are going to face that moment. This is the ultimate moment of truth. And there's people that are out there, and we just heard someone mention people like this this morning, where there was someone that was martyred for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there was people with them that also martyred. And usually that this person was with them in this particular gathering, he wasn't there that one day, and he said, what? and he thought something was wrong with him, the fact that he wasn't chosen to be there that day when these other people were taken. Meaning that he wanted to be taken in that state. This takes courage. And this takes standing up against these forces that are trying to prevent us from taking this path through which we are selected from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala وَقُلُّ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَلَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ بُلِجِنِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ وَنَّ بَقُرُ الرَّحِيمَ الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم وشر أنه الله الذي لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشر أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد إبرار الله أن يوصيكم ونفس يا يا بتقوى الله in conclusion that we are right around the Ramadan is right around the corner we are in a blessed month from the words of our Prophet Sallallahu Himself, Allah Mubarakana fi Rajab al-Sha'ban wa billigna Ramadan place blessing for us in Rajab and in Sha'ban and cause us to reach Ramadan we are in a blessed month because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi made dua for this month and one of the wisdoms of his dua is to cause us to prepare for this blessed month that is just around the corner like anything else in life that if you don't ever exercise then all of a sudden one day you go and you hit it hard you might hurt yourself that you have to prepare like anything else. If you're going to run a triathlon or you're going to run a marathon, is it surely in your right mind that you would train for that day that you actually go and you run that marathon? Similarly, with the blessed month of Ramadan, there's no month of Sayyid al-Shuhur. It is the best of months, the blessed month of Ramadan. It is the Shahr al nafahat But it is the month that we expose ourselves to the greatest of the divine graces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Of all of the other aspects of the merit of this blessed month that we have to take this seriously, it's right around the corner. And that we have to prepare ourselves mentally and physically and we have to be ready for this day that for that first night, boom, as soon as that first night comes in, is that we are ready to exert ourselves in a way that we don't exert ourselves in the remaining part of the year. And if you exert yourself in Ramadan and you give it more than what you give your normal days, that you will find a blessing that pervades all of the other days of the year from the blessing of what you exerted in that blessed month of Ramadan. Just as if you give to the day of Jummah, that which you don't give to even the other days, you have a blessing that extends through the remaining part of the week from the blessing of what you exerted. That this is what our Prophet ﷺ says, إذا سلمت الجمعة سلمت بقية الأيام وإذا سلمت رمضان سلمت بقية السنة as he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is a very blessed time. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that fill our hearts with iman, bless the people of Taqwa, and bless our hearts to be able to be attached to the Salihin when the picnic of the Salihin, as the prophets themselves as said in the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, causes us to be attached and connected to the Salihin. 
that in Allah wa malaikatuh yusalluna alayhim alayhim nabi Ya ayuhu al-lazeen amanu sallu alayhi wa sallu wa taslima Allahumma sallu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad Kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim Wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad Kama baraka ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim Fal alameen innaka habibun majid Wa radiyallahu ta'ala an saadat an khulafa rashidin Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali wa jimiya saadat an sahaba al-kiram wa jimiya ahli bayt al-Rasulillah Mumma tafari min al-Azdas wa alayna ma'ahum wa fihim bi rahmatika ya arham al-Rahimin Allahumma wa fihim al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat al-Ahya'an minhum al-Mu'at wa rabbana taqabbal minna inna kata al-Simi al-Alim wa tuba alayna inna kata al-Tawbab al-Rahim ya awwal al-Awwalin ya akhir al-Akhirin ya adal qubut al-Matin wa ya rahim al-Masakin wa ya arham al-Rahimin al-Jizna la rahmatan indika نسعد في هذه الدنيا والآخرة ونعسى الله سبحانه وتعالى تفضل خالص من الله الخير والإيمان والله تبصر في جود بنا ورسالة تعالي كلهم سبحانه وتعالى يا الله سبحانه وتعالى جل وعلا أوكين زي أوكين زي اللي عارفين يا بصر في جود بنا ورسالة تعالي في هذا الدين بس to take care of all of our affairs بس the people who are honored to have the ولاية العامة and the ولاية الخاصة to devote themselves entirely to Him سبحانه وتعالى يا الله تبارك وتعالى make everything easy for us and bring quick relief to the Ummah of our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم all Muslims that are suffering and struggling in any place in the world, our brothers and sisters in Palestine, our brothers and sisters in Syria, our brothers and sisters wherever they might be struggling in Somalia and Iraq and all throughout the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Afghanistan, may Allah ta'ala, Allahumma lurudna ilayhi maradin jameela and bring relief to the Ummah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ajilan ya ajilan ya rabbil alameen. Awakum Allah nasurukum Allah na Allah ya rabbil alameen wal ahsani wa yitayi wal qurba wa yinha'ani fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idukum la'alakum tadakkurun. Furfur Allah rahimya kurkum wa shkuru alayhi wa sallam. Thank you.